In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God. Was sent by who? From where? Unto the city of Galilee named Nazareth. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph. In the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in, uh, came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. That hail means rejoice. Rejoice, you are highly favored. 29. And when she saw him, she was troubled at this, at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be? Seeing I know not a man. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin, Elizabeth, she had also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Verse 45. Okay, let me read from. Verse 44, for lo, as soon as the voice of the salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. I want you to repeat this after me. Luke chapter 1 verse 45. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told from the Lord. Amen. I'm not going to keep long discussing anything with you, but I want to wish you well this year. And the Lord is going to speak to you just like he spoke to Mary. From what we have heard earlier on from last, the previous lessons, we know that the heart of Mary was so good that when she received the message, it was difficult. She was frightened. She was afraid. She was intimidated by the presence of an angel. So the Bible says she was troubled. And then also the message that the angel brought was very difficult to accept. A woman married to somebody or betrothed to somebody and you are not yet together. And all of a sudden people will hear that you are pregnant. By whom? You say an angel appeared to me. Who will believe it? And what kind of confusion is coming to come into the household of this woman and what kind of shame will come to the husband all these difficult things Mary because she had a good heart for the Lord the angel told this Mary that look 
your cousin, who was called barren, is now having a baby in her womb for six good months because the Lord has said it. And then Mary was told again, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary immediately stood up and said, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to the word the angel and the angel departed. Which means she now believed what was spoken by the angel. So when Mary made a quick visitation to Elizabeth and greeted Elizabeth, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit filled Elizabeth when Mary greeted Elizabeth. And so this Elizabeth started speaking in prophecy. And she testified that, look, immediately you spoke to me. The baby in my womb started leaping. Now I have seen that the, the mother of my Lord has visited me. And that Lord is Jesus Christ. And it was so awesome for this woman to say that the mother of my Lord has visited me. After all, the woman was also having a baby that the prophecy came from an angel, the same angel. But this time, the woman by the Holy Spirit is recognizing Mary as the mother of the Lord, of my Lord. And this is what the woman also prophesied to Mary. And she said it in verse 45. And blessed is she that believes, for there shall be a performance. Whatever the angel has come to tell you and you have believed it, God will perform it. Amen. And this is what the Lord wants me to tell you. That if you believe in the messages and in the truth of the word of God, God will perform it. Amen. Now let us look at this and look at some of the things that Mary believed. The first one was that when the angel came to Mary, he said, Rejoice, or hail, thou art highly what? Favored. You are blessed among women. That is the statement that the angel said. Did Mary believe it? Yes. Later on, what she said, let it be unto me as it has been spoken. It means she believed in it. So the first thing was the favor of the Lord. Was spoken to Mary. And Mary believed it. The second thing was to Mary because Mary was troubled. He said, fear not. All of you say, fear not. For the Lord's favor is upon you. Amen. Which means after he said fear not, he confirmed again that don't be worried because of the wrong circumstances, the, the, the wranglings that may be going on, the, the network of the enemy that may be going on. It doesn't matter. All what you need to do is to listen to God. Do not fear because I'm confirming that the favor of the Lord is upon you. Then the third thing that Mary also believed, and I want you to understand well, is that, is it possible in those times to believe that there could be a conception of a baby in a womb without a man being involved? But this is something which is very crucial. It's very difficult to believe. But Mary said, let it be unto me. Why is Mary saying that? Because the angel said, with God all things are what? Possible. So Mary believed that she can walk into impossibility and turn it to be possible. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Amen. For the next three weeks, we shall be discussing these three issues. And today I will not talk long. Now, number one, the favor of the Lord is upon you. Amen. Number two, fear not. Number three, be prepared to walk into the impossible. Amen. Clap unto the living God for that. When God is addressing you that fear not, and when God is addressing you that you shall have favor, and when God is saying that everything is possible, do not doubt. Like this woman is saying that blessed is the person who believes in what God has said, for it shall, there shall be a performance of it. Which means that God is going to make sure that what God tells you will be done. And today I'm saying that you are also highly favored. The favor of the Lord is upon the church. The favor of the Lord is upon his children. The favor of, of, of the Lord is upon all the people who are connected with Christ. Do you believe in that? Then God will make it be performed in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, probably you don't understand when I say the favor of the Lord. It's a unique thing. When we talk about the favor of the Lord, we are take, talking about the most essential thing for your life. Something very precious. When God's favor comes upon you, it is It is strange. Let us look at somebody, a man called Noah. When everybody had sinned, then God just went to him alone and said, look, you have my favor. I'm going to save you and your household alone. And God did it. If you were Noah, how would you behave? That you are the only person selected Above the condemnation. Above the punishment which is to come. Above the terrible things which is to come into the world. You are the only one that God says I have favor for you. You and your children. So to receive the favor of the Lord is a great thing. Look at somebody like Abraham. He was living in a territory where the people were worshipping many, many idols. And then one day God said, look, I want to give you favor. I want to make you great. I will make your descendants also great. For this reason, leave where you are. Go to where I'm showing you. And I'm going to bless you. Blessing, I'm going to bless you. And you shall also be a blessing. I'm going to make you great. Hallelujah. Which means that when God fixes his favor upon you, he treats you as a different person. It doesn't matter how people see you. It doesn't matter what mistakes that you make. God says, I am going to give you my favor. His favor is above everything. Amen. So this new year, if I am saying to you that by the power of God, the favor of the Lord will come upon you, Believe it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That the favor of the Lord is coming strangely upon you. Amen. Not only that, God spoke to Isaac and spoke to Jacob and told all of them that my favor shall be upon you and your descendants. And it happened. When God's favor is not upon you, everything you do does not please God. That is what happened when Cain and Abel were giving their sacrifices, the favor of the Lord was upon. You understand that? I cannot explain. God says you have my favor. God looks into your heart and says you have my favor. And that's it. You see, look at this boy who was so troublesome, Jacob, with the mother that they were able to fashion a, 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 a ploy where they could receive the blessings of the father 
without, without the father knowing it too much, all what the father could say is that, as for the skin, it looks like Esau. But the voice, uh, the, the skin looks like Esau, but the, lo- the voice is like that of Jacob. They stole the blessings of Jacob. Jacob had to suffer a little for that, for stealing the blessings. But the terrible mistake which the mother probably did was that God himself, before they were born, the mother went and asked of the Lord, why is this so much struggle in my belly? And God stood her. There are two nations, two people in you. They are twins. And what I want to tell you is that the smallest one, the youngest one, shall be the master. He shall have my favor. So from birth, Jacob had the favor of God. There was no need going to find a ploy to receive any blessings for Jacob. Probably the woman was afraid that what God had told her had to be confirmed. That is why probably the woman had her mind on Jacob. God's favor when it comes upon you is a strange thing. From birth, God can give you a favor. Even from the mother's womb. Hallelujah. I have the favor of the Lord. And because you are here under the cross, you have the favor of the Lord too. Hallelujah. And everything that came to Jacob, his name became Israel. And all his descendants are blessed even to this day. God told Samuel to go and find a new king after Saul had disappointed him. Then they went to a house. The house of Jesse. And then they were he called that I want to come and crown a new king. Uh, king, I want to come and anoint a new king who will take over from Saul. They brought the tallest man, the biggest man, the oldest man. He said, this is not the man. They brought another one. They brought, they brought, they brought. The man said then, there is nobody else. He said, are you sure? Are you sure there is somebody that the favor of the Lord is upon? He said, oh, but that little boy who is watching the sheep and the flock, in the, the, he can't be counted as one of them. He said, bring him. When he brought him, that little tiny boy was anointed as a king. The favor of the Lord is a strength and is inexplicable. But what we are aware of is that those who have been purchased of the blood of Jesus, we have the favor of the Lord. Hallelujah. Clap unto the living God for that. So it was not strange that even before this boy faced Goliath, he could kill lions and wolves and, 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 and bears who came to attack? How can you do it with your physical strength? It was the favor of the Lord. Amen. That is how the favor of the Lord is. God told Joshua, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of my life, of your life. For as I was with Moses, so I shall be with you. Wherever you go, you just be courageous and be strong. You will be successful. You see, when this pronouncement has come upon you, why do you have to be scared? Why do you have to be worried? The favor of the Lord was upon Joshua. And so he could tell the son, son, don't move until I finish my exploits. And the son stood still. Clap unto the living God for that. You see, if you understand what the favor of the Lord is about, you tend to be, something must be stirring up in you. You become happy. That this year we are saying that the favor of the Lord is upon the church, is upon you, is upon every. But the warning is that blessed are those who believe for they shall see the performance of what the Lord has said. 
If you believe, fine. If you don't believe, the favor will not be on you. I believe. Amen. Amen. And I expect you also to believe. Amen. That the favor of the Lord will come upon you, no matter what. It still will look strange. It will look difficult. It will look bizarre. But I say that because of the favor of the Lord, you will swim through. Amen. That is what the Lord is saying. Amen. Last Friday night, uh, that was the 31st night, the Lord gave us a message that there is an open door. The door, the door is an opportunity to enter. But you can refuse to enter into it. If you don't enter, you, it's your own problem. It's not God who has denied you. But you should know that the door is open and it's an opportunity. So all the various opportunities the Lord has opened unto you, you have to understand that. This new year message is telling you, or the messages that I will give in the next three weeks, they are all suggesting to you that the favor of the Lord is upon you. Amen. Amen. So we saw David, a young man who was uh, uh, so tiny and small. When he went to war. He went to see his brothers and he saw that there was a man who was so gigantic, so tall, so big, stalwart, ridiculing the people of God. Ridiculing the, the people who have the favor of the Lord. And he did not understand it. How can this be? That this uncircumcised fellow will come and ridicule the people of the Lord and blaspheme against our God. I will fight him and I will destroy him. And his, uh, his brothers were angry. What, what do you mean? You are too known. You are too arrogant. You this boy. You think you can fight? We are veterans. You can fight. Even saw himself. He's afraid. But this boy had in his mind and when he met Goliath, he said, you have come with me, come to me with cudgels and swords and other things. But I have come unto you in the name of the Lord Mosai. And he conquered. After that, you know, women will sing. And as for women, when you want them to sing, when you do well, they will sing for you. When you are brilliant, when you are wonderful, women will sing for you. As for women, they will always want to do laudable things for heroes. So they started singing. Oh, Saul killed only thousand, but David has killed what? Ten thousand. All of the speech was demonstrating that the favor of the Lord was more upon what? David than to Saul. Sometimes when I study the scripture critically, I begin to question certain things about the favor. And that is what you don't need to worry about or is to believe. Because if I study the sin that was committed by Saul, that God rejected him, and I study the sin that David committed, My God. And then God said, David is my beloved. Saul only said that. I have gone, you have instructed me to go and destroy some people. But when I went, I saw the old king. He was too old. I'm believing that one day I'm going to be old like him. So I saved the king called Agag. And then also I saw some big, 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 big sheep fatlings. And I said, all these things, they, God deserve all these things. I will take them and go and sacrifice them to my God. And God said, you have disobeyed me. I have rejected you. That's it. That was, that was his cry. Oh, you don't know that is his cry. And that is where the quotation, to obey is better than what? Sacrifice. But rebellion is as sin as what? Witchcraft. So those who rebel, you are witches. Hallelujah. And you see, but David, after he had been crowned a king, saw a beautiful girl from the top of his parlor. And then he instructed the foolish servants, go and bring that girl in. And they went and he slept with the girl. 
And when the girl became pregnant, the husband was at a war front. David convinced this boy to come so that he would shift the baby to that poor man. You know, some of you, I don't know whether you belong to your father or you don't belong. <laughs> Women can tell who are the real fathers of their children. And, and the girl was going to do it. The girl was prepared to do it. Is, is, is that not true? The girl was ready. Come and let me shift the king's son to you. And when this boy, full of holiness, and I always take him as one of the most sacred and sanctified, dedicated militants in Israel. He said, oh, how can I come and sleep and enjoy with my wife here? When the Ark of Covenant, the thing that is representing God's presence, is at the forefront of the war, we are defending it. I will never do it. And, and David saw he was going to be exposed. So he wrote a letter to Joab, his uncle, that when this boy comes, put him in front of where he can die. And they killed him. And yet God said, David, I love. Compare this and Saul's case. So sometimes when you are dealing with certain people, be careful. Especially those who have the favor of the Lord. When you are treating them, be very careful. Because the favor of the Lord is a strange thing. It doesn't matter whether the person is at fault or is right. I'm not saying be at fault. But be very careful those that have got the favor of the Lord. When you are dealing with them, be very careful. Because they will always be winners. Have you forgotten Joseph? When he saw it, God gave him a dream. He, he didn't manufacture or he didn't create a fiction in his mind. And he said he saw his father and all the uh, people bowing to him. And the brothers were angry. Even his father was also angry. Through the dream, he went into slavery. They planned to kill him. They took him to everywhere. And even during the course, false accusations were made about him and he was put in prison. But because of the same dream which God gave to him as his favor, he had the favor to come out and to become the prime minister of Israel. Amen. That is the favor of the Lord. You can't change somebody who has already got the favor. That is why I, I personally, I don't struggle for favor. I don't struggle. I will, I will not struggle because the favor must come from the Lord. And today God is saying that the favor of the Lord shall be upon you. I cannot talk because I want to. I want you to dance for the next 10 or 15 minutes. To understand that, Mary stood perfectly to understand that the angel of the Lord had declared unto her that rejoice for you have received the favor of the Lord. So the same way this new year, I'm telling you by the power of Christ that rejoice for the favor of the Lord is upon this house. In Jesus' name, shall we all stand up and clap for the living God? Handa kabai libi. Musicians, come. Come and sing. Come and sing and dance.